The words of a tale bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 18.8 Let's all admit it, gossip feels good. We enjoy negative information about other people. Controversy sells. It's delicious. It is unfortunate to say. It is a delicacy to our corrupt hearts. We gulp these words with relish. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9 Do you speak up when others are put down? Or do you just stand there and listen in sinful silence as the explosion of gossip and slander hits you in the face? Open your mouth. With every unkind word that goes unconfronted, a reputation dies. So much is at stake in our words. They matter not just to us, but even more, far more, to God. We are always speaking before the face of God. Our words have emotional power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, 21. That is why Jesus said, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Matthew 12, 36 Words do not even have to be intentional to be deadly. They can be careless. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 12, 18 In English, we speak similarly of cutting remarks. It happens in an outburst of rash words, reckless words, unthinkable words, simply blurting out what we might think without filtering it wisely. It is easy to do, but it is not easy for the other person to receive or forget. We must see razor blades flying out of our mouths directly into the body of the other person. These wounds and scars remain long after the words have faded away. The tongue of the wise brings healing. The sage teaches us. Why? Because the tongue of the wise cares more about soothing an injury than winning an argument. Here are three simple but important words that bring healing. I am sorry. Just those three little words, I am sorry. This is the way of renewed fellowship, whether it is between a husband and a wife, a parent and a child, within a Christian community or between groups. The world has a right to question whether I am a Christian, and more than that, if I am not willing to do this very simple thing. The world has a right to question whether Jesus was sent from God and whether Christianity is true. Time does not heal all wounds. Ignoring injuries does not mean that they disappear. But wise words can and can bring healing. Going back and saying the humble, honest, Beautiful things that need to be said is step one toward a powerful healing. Conclusively, the harmful things people say to us do not even matter. Finally, all that matters is the gospel, things he says to us. You are my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Romans 8:16 And in a time of crisis when you might be too confused and hurt even to feel your place in his love 
you are still his child. You will eventually feel his love because the Holy Spirit has the lips of the wise and he will bring healings as no one else can. That is the hopeful, cheering reality that we want to spread to each other and to all who will listen to the gospel. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Proverbs 12, 25 We should not stand alone. In our isolation, we become depressed and afraid. Sometimes we are in two minds. We trust God, but we do not really trust God. Therefore, we need a good word from outside, a stabilizing word of hope from another Christian. We can speak good words in each other's hearts. The message we speak, because it is the truth, may not be that the problem is disappearing, but the message can always be, God is with you. Our words put the condition of the hearts on display. Mortlock Daniel writes, The tongue is the servant of the heart. Strictly speaking, he says, The tongue never speaks at random. The tongue is the criterion of the moral man. A diseased heart is thereby truthfully advertised. Every time we express ourselves, our tongue is at work and reveals the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. So you have to think beyond mere spoken words, and even silence in some situations is a form of speech. Solomon says that the tongue is endowed with power. Life and death reside in the power of the tongue. You have any doubt that this is true, that your tongue has considerable power? It is rarely, if ever, neutral. And because the tongue expresses the thoughts and intentions of the heart, it almost always has an agenda. People love power, regardless of the source. It is easy to think of power when we see the incredible benefits of electricity, an engine, or the devastating power of hurricanes and tornadoes, and Lord forbids nuclear weapons. We do not naturally associate power with the tongue but the Bible does. And unlike physical strength, nearly everyone has the power of speech. And here is what you must remember. The power of the tongue is primarily exercised in the spiritual and not in the physical realm. One could argue that when we exercise the power of our tongues, the impact, for the better or for the worse, is greater than that of electricity or car engines or other powerful tools and technologies that enthrall us in our world. Let us pray. Dear Father, how priceless is your unfailing love. You have created us fearfully and wonderfully. You have ordained all of our days and written them in your book before we were born. All your thoughts about us are valuable. We praise you because we are your handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works that you have prepared in advance for us to do. We come before you today to humble ourselves before you and to submit to your will for our lives. Because of you, Father, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Lead us, Lord, in the way that we should go. Direct our steps and fulfill your plans for our lives. Let our feet run quickly in order to follow you. All praise, honor, and glory belong to you, our immortal, invisible, only true and living God. In Jesus' name, amen.